Okay, okay, okay. Sorry, I can't get any of these damn buttons to work. Now they're working. Oh, it's, it's snowing where I am. I don't know about you guys. Uh... Let's see. Hi, Barry. Good to see you. You should be seeing my screen. You should be hearing my voice. Uh, let me know if that is not the case. Okay. Is everybody in? Everybody's audio is turned on. It seems. Where is everybody? We're a little light today. Good week. Like this. Finishing up strong. Come on. Come on. Uh, okay. Okay, okay. Welcome to the Market Watch Group Weekly Market Wrap. I'm Scott. I'm your host. These are your disclaimers. This is for educational and illustrative purposes only. No guarantees. We're not advisors. We don't give recommendations. But the alerts are starting. Don't forget, 9 a.m. Eastern is when alerts will come. Um, anything that is given as an alert will be discussed in an ongoing. Um, ideally, you have an idea when you take it what your trade management is. We'll have some uh, uh, trade management guidance included in the alert. The alert will include both a stock and an option uh, uh, consideration. Well, we'll see how that goes. Um, if we had started them today... The alert would have been on IBM. <laughs> Anybody in? So there you go. Those are the disclaimers. I hope you have a fresh coffee. I do. Oof, it's hot still. Woo, piping hot. Okay, here's our agenda. We're going to look at today's market, analyze it, try it on, see how it fits. No, we're just going to see how see how it looks. Uh, we'll revisit our posture now at the end of the week to see, did we catch the essence of the market? Did, did uh, something shift? Something starting to shift? Do we have concern? If so, where? We'll talk about mindset for any trades being carried over the weekend, any trades that you maybe took. Uh, there's still signals. The one thing that I have uh, come, the conclusion I've reached is that the the... Market that we have is not an ebb or a, not a feast and famine type market where everything goes at once. You ride them all at the same time. You get out, and it's just like one, if you miss a window, you miss everything. Versus a rolling set of opportunities, setups, and triggers. We we have much more rolling. It's like well, this one's starting. Industrials, financial starting. Technology's coming to a close, and then once, and it's it's more of a leapfrog type pattern where awesome that's better we're getting in we're managing we're getting out and starting the cycle again and again um, well at least let me know is that how you're finding it has anyone run into any concerns recently or issues if so what are they share them with the group what are we looking for next week? So we'll obviously take a look at the economic calendar, see what's upcoming. We'll look at the shopping list, meaning we'll look at our watch list. We'll see 
are there signals developing? I believe that there still are signals signals developing in the financial realm. So I'm looking for those. And trading plan progress. You still have two more days. Not quite two, but pretty close to, to two. Doesn't seem like a strong bull market. Oh, okay. Okay. Like, do you feel like it's when you're in it, you're not feeling the strength when you look back? We'll talk about that. Hold that thought. Um, trading plan progress. So that's a concern. So uh, you can see this is where we were. We we increased our score. Volatility got a little better. Volume got a little better. Short term got a little better. Mm, it's going to be real tough to see more than this. I don't know that any of these are going to get better. And we may even see it pull back a tick, which is fine. Six and a half. Anything above six, I'm strong bullish. It's fine. It's as long as it stays above that, even if it dropped back to six, I'd be like, yeah, no, I'm still good. I'm still good. Why doesn't it seem like a, a strong market? Well, let's go look. I don't need the calculator. Let's go look. I, I, I will have to move my, I will have to move my line though. I'll have to move it over like this potentially. Okay. Back in, back in order. Be water, my friends. SPY. I mean, it looks and feels bullish, right? Doesn't it? We see where our windows are. That's a window. Here. That's a window. Here. That was a window. It didn't do as well, but it still it produced. One, two, three. We seem to be coming to an end, although, like I said, it's not just these windows. We might have a financials over here and technology over here, and it just sort of balances itself out, right? Um, you know, we 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 got through this January iffiness. We caught most of this, and we caught a good piece of this. A little bit of this one, right? We're like, hey, maybe a couple of trades on and then a few more here and then a few more here. Then it was a little iffy. But even this gave us, you know, I think I you know, a break even, a small loss, a small gain. I'm, I'm fine if I take this window and you break even on it. Um, small gains here, pretty good gains here, pretty good gains here. Real good gains here, real good gains here, and then there's a little bit mixed in. That's a great bull market right there that we right. I mean, and and we, we want to make sure that we see it. So now what though? Well, you know, yes, the market's a bit overbought at this point. Uh, from a broader perspective, I wouldn't expect a lot of things right now. It's only financials and everything else. Maybe he's going to have a pullback. And when it pulls back and when this pulls back here and when this turns, we're, we we got to be ready to jump on our horses. Get on get on for the ride. Let's go. Giddy up. I think we could have two or three more of these February, March, and April. I think there's no impediments. Earnings have been strong. The Fed is expected to be accommodative and has and we've even adapted our expectations. This is Remember that the the adaptation, um, the, the area where we uh, uh, adapted our expectations, I'm going to draw it, it's going to be super fancy, was back in here. That's really where we saw most of it. By the time we came out of that, we were already more, more likely than not to not have a cut. And now, where we are right now, even now, we have adjusted to... Five to one against. Five to one against in March. And basically 50-50 that we get our first cut in May. So yes, we've adapted. We've adjusted to a more, a more, uh, uh, no, a less dovish. We still expect the Fed to be dovish, to be accommodative, but less so, slower. I mean, you know, I said from the very beginning, UBS is up in the night thinking it's going to drop 2.75% this year. It's eight meetings. I can't stress that enough. 
One down, seven to go. What do we expect in the next one? Nothing. <laughs> Six meetings. Yeah, I think we might get one. One percent over the course of the year, maybe one and a quarter. Um, they're not going to be in a rush, especially when things are strong. Employment's strong. GDP is strong. Consumer sentiment is strong. Yada, yada. Okay. Okay, so that's how I see it. Now, it is at a new high, but we already scored this according to this trend that we see in front of us here. This trend now represents the two. So it could get all the way up there and then all the way back. And it's not until it changes this trend, it's a two. It's a, tr it's a two until it's not. So is that going to move? No. If we look at the weekly, we, we already, we scored the weekly higher back here. Remember? We're like, oh, it busted out of that trend. So now we're thinking, hey, maybe, maybe, let's draw a straight line now. This thing is going to accelerate into something more like this. Oh, that would be very strong. That would be a one and a half. Maybe 1.75. Right now, we're just, we, we've are just we already scored a little bit of it. But it, it might diddle around, and then all of a sudden, it comes back, and then maybe it gets to here, and then maybe we're like, oh, there it is. And that might be after the summer doldrums. Who knows, right? Who knows how long that might take? All I know right now is it's strong and accelerated. What does my market posture say about that? That it's strong and it recently accelerated. We're a one and a quarter. These numbers look great. These numbers look great. Volume. Volume. Let's go take a look at volume. One month daily. Okay, now. What's changed? Nothing. We have two days here. Um, nothing. One day here, two days here, four to one, four to one, still going to be 0. 0.75. Eh, if we don't get a new day of volume next week, when these things are sitting over here and it's getting a little stale and it's only two to one, then we'll drop it to a half a point, but it's going to stay 0. 0.75 one more week. So, um, we're going to get at least one more week. If we get if next week we get one more above average volume day, then it's going to continue to stay at 0.75. All we need is one volume day here and there, and it's fine. Without it, it'll start to deteriorate, and that's fine if it does. This could drop back to, to zero, and the rest of this is still keeps us at a six. So major market. Um we know that we're focused highly right now on small caps, right? small caps and the level of participation hey look at that we got here we need to get a little higher and and that might that might come back but hey it held the 200 it held the 50 we talked about the significance of it being able to hold the 50 it held higher low than the prior which continues to confirm that this consolidation that came as a result of what of interest rate expectations adjusting to something a, more, a little more realistic, right? That's the thought process. Okay, we can live with that. It's not going to get worse. That's for damn sure. Probably not going to get better either. Probably going to stay as is. Uh, sector rotation, 0.75. What do I, uh, what has been our concern? Our concern has been X, L, Y, Consumer discretionary. Hey, we we were we were thinking that there's hope right there, but then we're like, wait, is it only Amazon? And then no, it busted on up. So what has it done? It's broken out of its consolidation back here. It broke on volume. That's a nice little piece. Is it tradable now? No. I mean, at this point, it's very close to its old high. What do we think? We think that when it pulls back especially if it holds here and, and starts to turn. Bingo, bingo. That's our next trade. Very similar to this right here. 
it came down, it broke out, pulled back, bam. Was that phenomenal and did it last long? No, we all know that, that September came around and it didn't last as long as we were hoping. But it did make a profitable trade. Um, did we take the next one? No, no, no new signal developed. So we got one trade out of it and then we moved on. I can live with that. That's fine. If it's one trade, it's one trade. If something else moved into favor, something else moved into favor. If the whole market moved out of favor, which is what happened, well, then we're glad we eased up and didn't keep trading. Yes? Okay, perfect. Perfect. Um, all right. Perry, what am I missing? What what what's what do you feel like makes this not feel as strong? And I I I kind of have a sense, and you guys can all confirm this or not. But sometimes when you're actually, it's like, you know, when we do the market posture, we're, we're climbing to the top of the hill and we look down and we're like, oh, look, we can see so clearly. But when you're in the mix, you're in the jungle, it's what's right in front of you. And sometimes what's right in front of you doesn't, you're like, oh, this doesn't look that nice. And that, that we hesitate, we, right? This is where I, I really, really stress, like force on ourselves to develop confidence in the in the weeds in the jungle based on strength of the the foundation coming from the market posture that's that's what i hope but this looks good this could be enough maybe we do raise our score maybe we hit the the oh, it's just the ever so elusive seven you hit that seven you're like woo we seven okay so sector it's on the fence we'll see Let's go look at VIX. Okay, we'll go look at the VIX. V I. Oh, that's not it. V I X. Damn. So here's what's interesting. Okay. Um, in anticipating hasn't produced good trades. Ah, okay. Now that is good recognition. So what are you saying? You're saying either A, change the the nature of the anticipation, B, st stop anticipating. The old joke says, do guy goes to the doctor, says, doctor, it hurts when I do this. And the doctor says, well, don't do that. Um, Yeah. Okay. Love it. I love the reflection. What's the VIX telling me? A little bit of concern here. We, we had this, remember this didn't happen. That's a bad data feed. And it kept coming back down. And then we're like, oh, look, it didn't get back up. It was a lower high, boom, boom. It's de-escalating. The problem is de-escalation needs to come down here to about 12.4. And right now we're stuck at about 12.8. 12 People are like, that's only 0.4. It doesn't matter. Rules a rule. That low is higher than the previous low. And beyond that, now look, we said that's the lower high. That's a great, that was a great trigger. If you use that to to if you had hedges, you got out. If you had if you if you use that to help get bullish trades, that gave you one, two, three, four, five good days. Five good days. But now what? Now, all of a sudden, this volatility is not bleeding off. Last time we bled off from here to here, that was that was big, right? This time it's only like this, and it's stuck. And that's a higher low if and when what happens, if and when it turns. So there may be two alerts. There may be a hedge alert and a trade alert. And you might be thinking, how does that happen? Follow the signals. Don't ask questions. Follow the signals. <laughs> Follow the signals, grasshopper. Okay. Uh, so that's the concern. Is the VIX going to improve its score? No. Is it going to get worse? Also no. We had a lower high. And I believe we scored that last time. Did we not? We sure did. Quarter of a point. I said if it breaks... Um, the next, the low, then we get the other half a point or the other quarter of a point. It's got to break below 12.4 and then we get to one and a half. 
One and a half is pretty strong. It doesn't tend to get much stronger than that. So we'll see. We will see. Um, but I am concerned. I do have this automatic head signal on deck. Right? Locked and loaded. But I'm I'm still thinking there may be bullish signals. Okay. Questions, comments, concerns, let me know. That's the VIX. Uh, as we look at the rest of our considerations here, um, the um, everything's moving. Office buildings remain half empty, but U.S. studies can shrug it off. Wow. Wow. Amazing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what else? Let's go look at the calendar. Uh, we know now we are now this is as this is last week. What did we have? Adjusted inflationary pressures from uh, uh, seasonal down next week. What do we have? A good amount of data. Uh, we don't have much on Monday, but Tuesday we have CPI. Wednesday, nothing. Thursday, we have manufacturing. Jobless claims, sales, production, utilization. Friday, we have CPI. No, we have PPI. Um, so the next week, we've got a lot of inflationary data, a little bit of, of baseline economic data. So that's something that we'll be looking at. We'll see what happens. Uh, real quickly, you can see the current Fed. Um, it's at about five to one in March when we go look at May. Uh, one and a half to one in favor of a cut. That's where I've been the whole time is May. I was like, certainly if it if they want to cut it in March because they think they can, hell yes, that's going to rally the market for sure. They cut it when it's five to one and then they make the cut, the market will be in a good place when that happens. So sure, fingers crossed. <laughs> Why not? Uh, okay, let's go look at the watch list, see how things look. Where, where our signals are likely to come from. Next week, Apple, Apple may, may turn into one next week, right? Absolutely may. Got to be open to it at this point. Apple, considering it. AIG, not yet, but could. AMD. I got to tell you, AMD is looking like you could make the argument now. <laughs> it did a little bit of a false start. But it's all of a sudden looking like it's trying again. If if you're if you're not loving it, what do you do? You wait and see if you get the hike in Ashi. You'd wait one more day. So maybe we take a look and see if we think that looks viable on Monday. Uh, Amazon. It's taking off again, pulling consumer discretionary along. American Express still looks strong. Boeing still looks nothing. BK. That looks tradable right there. Stochastics is turning up. Held some support, bam, tradable. It's not a, it's not a, an official alert because the alerts come through Discord. Does that look like a viable trade? Yeah, volatility is low. Options are pretty cheap. Stochastics is turning up. Held support, turning up. BLDR overextended, but boy, it kept moving. I didn't catch these last ones. I got out back there. <laughs> BX, anyone take it? It made a move. It got up to here, right? Back there was anticipatory, confirmed. I, I, if not, I would look at BX or, I would, or excuse me, BK, or I would look at City also setting up right now. Real nice looking setup. What are we waiting for? I wanted to cross about the 5450 line maybe, right? 5450, it crosses, bam. I can put my stop down here. I risk a buck and a half. If I get this move, I'm getting five and a half. Risk buck and a half to get five and a half. That's almost four to one. That's a great looking setup. With very high degree of probability that becomes an alert come Monday morning. Give me your thoughts. It's quiet out there. Caterpillar, I think, is starting to set up. Uh, it's consolidating. The volume is low. 
if this thing holds up uh at or above 305 yeah why not uh capital one on the list looks a lot like uh city bk oil it's why i don't trade around earnings you can see what what momentum it started to have and we saw this we said in another day this would be a, this would be a little trade bk but a bit early yes it's right there though right it's right there um, this move for two days, earnings came, knocked it right back down. Costco, if you happen to hold on, it's probably the end of the road for this trade. Looking for the next one. CrowdStrike, oh, did anyone take this one? That was a nice confirmation last week at this time. We talked about this trade. Beautiful. It's a little overextended now. In fact, now's when it's looking to take a little profits, right? Looking to take some profits. Is there a reason to stay in? Yeah, you're, 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 it looks looks still good. Still plenty of opportunity. CSX, a little overbought, but maybe starting to consolidate. So Caterpillar starting to consolidate. CSX, financials is already consolidated, sitting at a support, possibly ready to trade. Uh, industrials is now pulling back for a couple of days. Others are just barely hitting resistance. It's a, it's a rolling cycle of trades. Best way it could come. Fantastic. Delta. Nothing. DHI. Nothing. Oh, uh, maybe DHI. Maybe you could argue that this busted back above the 50. Now it's holding the 50. That's a that's a maybe. Here's the thing. I'll be like, oh yeah, maybe. And then I won't do it. And then it'll take off and I'll be like, we talked about it. But yeah, I, it's not that much for me. Just close Delta. Got it. Diamonds looks a little overbought, but also looks like it's trying to maybe see if it could start something up. Fast and all, possibly second round. This thing failed to get going, but it also never really sold off. Trying again. Also in the industrial section. Uh, let's take a look at... Let's take a look at GE overextended. Nothing there. Gold. No. Google. Oh, Google. Yeah, you're back. Here we are like, yeah, it's maybe done enough. Here we're like, oh, it's done enough. All we got to do now is wait for the next consolidation back here. And we've got ourselves another nice trade on our hands. Home Depot. Uh, I'm not convinced still. Here's what I think. If consumer discretionary holds up, then let's do a new search on Sunday. We don't have much. Amazon is strong. We've got Home Depot, but it looks a little iffy. Let's go through and uh, let's do a, a consumer discretionary search. Somebody make sure to remind me. IBM, valid, anticipatory. Actually, yesterday it gave kind of an engulfing pattern with a cross. So yesterday was valid. Today confirmed. Today, Heiken Ashi confirmation. Anybody take IBM? Let me know. This would have been absolutely on the list this morning for an alert to trade it basically on the open. I'm, I, I'm sorry. I wish that I had got it out, but there was just a little confusion with the formatting and the, the final logistics of alerts. Um, want it right now, Friday before close. I mean, it's valid. You know, you could get in now with a different thought process for your stop. Um, a little more aggressively rather than down here where you would have been yesterday. You're up here. Stop is uh one th one eighty three fifty. One eighty three fifty. You're two and a half points. Tight stop. Let it rip. That was a trading philosophy of mine for a little while. Tight stop. Let it rip. 250. What do I need? I need 750 and I've got three to one. Where does 750 exist on this? We're at 196. 750 exists at 193.50. That's right here. If you do a Heiken Ashi tight stop, right? Um, that's all you need to get yourself a three to one. That's not huge for IBM and how IBM moves. Yeah? Eyes wide open to your risk and to the reward. The, the options are mid, 
They're mid, but they're cheap. What does that, what does that mean? Well, Citigroup, the options were low. They were at the bottom. But at the bottom down here, they're still at 25%. The lowest this has been is 24. When I look at IBM, it's in the middle, but in the middle of what? Well, the high is 27. It's only three points higher than the low of City. The low is down here at 10, so 18 is not bad. So would I still buy options? Yeah, probably so. Probably so. Intel. Uh, it's got work to do. IWM, we already said, looks pretty good. JP Morgan, I like others better. I like BK. I like City. I like Capital One, all better. Um, you got IWM. Looks, it's been looking good. We'd really like to see it. We'd really like to see it. It doesn't have to get to 205, even if it just gets to like 201, 201 and a half, a little higher than this. Give us the small caps. That's all we ask. They held the line. I have to, I have to conclude that part of our chanting, hold the line. I think that helped. I think we really gave the market something to think about. Uh, Meta. I, I think Meta and Google are great, but they're just maybe a little overextended. Need to wait for the pullback. Great. I think Microsoft is great, but a little overextended. We got to wait a little bit for those. Financials are already set up. Industrials are starting to consolidate. A little bit of tech starting to, a little bit of it not. Communication services, not really. Yeah? Netflix. That's that's a maybe. It's not a great, like, hey, look at this price action turning for us. That looks fantastic. Um, but at the same time, it, it, the stochastic's turning. I mean, there's something there, I would say. Did we say we liked fast and all? I think we did. Yeah, fast and all, IBM. No, no. Let's put Netflix as a maybe. Let's put it on the list. Anyone like it? Do you like it? Do you not like it? Oh, look at NVIDIA. Smashing, smashing ever higher. Like a bull in a... China shop, parabolic, looks good. Picard, that was one that we talked about, looked at, looks good. A little overextended. Industrials, QQQ, overextended. SMCI is doing a phenomenal impression of NVIDIA. <laughs> ah, it's amazing. I can hardly tell you two apart. <laughs> mm. SPY, strong, but overbought a little. UNP, put it on the list. Where is it? Industrials. So what's the conclusion? Industrials and financials is likely where we're going to find opportunity, communication services, technology. Not as likely this next week. Uh, we'll see what happens in the realm of a consolidation. The VIX is still just kind of sitting down there. It's it's not giving us a, a hedge signal, but it's still set up. I am certainly watching it like a hawk. Waste management. Oh, look at waste management. Starting to pull back, trying to give us something. Where is it located? Industrials. Interestingly. Consumer discretionary. Okay. You know what? Let's get Walmart and Costco. If, they're, if Costco's ending, and Walmart obviously is too, it made it up there. This gives us a, it's like a cup and handle. Now we're looking for the handle. If the handle comes back, I'd be looking right here, 167-ish. You can see it's this old high, close to this old high, right in the middle of this breakout candle. Just took IBM, Bob. Nice, love it. Uh, Walmart looks like it's going to come soon. I would say Costco will follow suit. Let's look at our X, our X's, our our sector and index ETFs.
XLB sideways. XLC. Mm. Uh, I mean, it's strong, but it's hard to read. It looks like it could maybe have some consolidation still. Energy, kind of iffy. Financials, strong, looking for the next signal. Industrials, strong, looking for maybe the consolidation and the next signal, a little behind financials. XLK, strong, but overbought, not quite there. Staples, what did we say? Walmart. Costco, staples look pretty good. Stable bullish trend, it's pulling back. Remember my basic core trading advice. Find a bull market, buy the dips. Utilities, negative, negative goes Charlie. XLV looks great. Put healthcare on the list. You know what? If you have a hard time finding the right healthcare stock, which I do sometimes, trade XLV. Let's let's think about it. Maybe we get an alert on XLV because it's valid. Anything we see on these XLs, this stock trades eight million shares. The options are liquid. It's fine. It's 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 a valid opportunity for us to consider XLY. Okay. Okay. Maybe we do get that quarter of a point. That elusive seven market posture is just lurking. It's ready. It wants it. It wants us to score it that way. I can feel that it does. I can definitely feel that. Uh, okay. Am I missing any stocks? Did I cover it? I think I did. I think I did. Uh, let's take a look at our trading plan. You're doing record keeping. You're thinking, oh, it's so easy, just those two. Trade log, trade journal. Here is the trade. That's not it. There it is. Here's the trade log. Column R is the trade journal. Anything about that trade that you think, oh man, I might want to know, I might want to analyze or recognize that this happened. I gave back a bunch right at the end. I missed this. I thought about it and I didn't do it, blah, blah, whatever it is. Write it down here. That way next month, when you look backwards a month, you don't have to remember it, but you're like, oh yeah, I remember that trade now because it sparks your memory. It's there already as a marker. We need that marker, that breadcrumb to remind ourselves. Uh, that's your trade journal. Your trade log is all the rest of it. A through P minus K and O. Um, what symbol? What system? Remember, that's internal. That's for you. You might have one system, two, three. But code it so you know where the trade came from, what type of trade. Uh, for options, it could be anything. Spread. Bull call, bull put, long call. Long or short, did you buy it to open or did you sell it to open? It's got to be one or the other and it's got to be right or else the calculations will be wrong. Don't get this part wrong. If you buy it, you're long. If you sell to open, you're short. What's the date? Remember that the date from here to your exit date is going to give you how long you were in the trade. And then your second exit date will give you how long did you continue in the trade. <coughs> Prices, contracts, exits, um, that's going to go into about to win, uh, about to go to these exits here. Those combined give you your gain or loss here. You cannot enter this in gray. It's automatic. As long as you get everything else right, the log will do the work for you. 25 trade minimum. Give me 25. If you're just starting, give me your last 25 to start with. If you really are, I'd go back and get all of 2023 in here. And then you have that to, to give me some insights to, to form my and, and inform my decision making. But either way, get at least one column. What does that mean? Next week, we're talking about analytics. These are your analytics. Um, this is automatic. Now it's versus, vice versa. The only thing you can change is in gray. 
Just this. How much money did you start with when you started this? How much risk are you willing to take so that it establishes your risk per trade so that I can give you your loss to risk ratio? It's going to tell you how many days you stayed in winners, how many days you stayed in losers, how many days you stayed in after you sold the first amount. What's your net return percentage? It will give you the dates of this column so that you can go back and analyze it later if there's specific trades. It breaks it down. Winners, losers, winning percentage, losing percentage, average win, average loss, reward to risk, expectancy. All the data you need to see this from a business perspective, um, et cetera. That's important. We need it. We want it. We learn from it. We make observations about what aspects of our trading we can uh, uh, evolve in order to produce new expected results, record keeping. Press said, can you give us a screenshot or show option chain? What do I have there? <gasps> yeah, here's my option chain. My option chain, I'll go to a single here and my option chain is volume and open interest. I really don't care about Delta and theta and vega from an option level. So if I put it here, delta, gamma, theta, this is option level stuff. And I'm like, oh, my gamma, my theta is minus 0.25. What does that mean? It means nothing until I actually construct a trade and it multiplies that minus 0.25 by the number of contracts. And then it numbers multiply or it multiplies it by a hundred to give it a per contract. Then it multiplies it by the number of contracts I'm considering for my trade. Now I can understand how much actual daily time decay my trade is going to suffer. I don't care about it here. I care about it down here. Let me show you where those two here's are. I don't care about these Greeks. I care about these Greeks. Once I come down and I have my position, this is more meaningful. Um, so I like to have liquidity. What's the volume? What's the open interest? I mean, obviously that informs the spread, but that is what I like to have for my setup. Um, good question. Hopefully that makes sense. Let me know if there's any other questions. That's going to about wrap it up. We're bullish. There's bullish trades. There's bullish opportunities that we're in, that we're thinking about, that we're starting to wrap up. Uh, I'm a, I'm, I expect my posture to stay bullish. I don't expect any information. I mean, of course, anything could happen at any time, but as of right now, everything looks to be uh, uh, good to go. Hope you have a great weekend. I hope your weather's better than mine. It's windy, it's cold, it's snowy. I'm probably going to stay inside all weekend long. I still have just piles and piles of dog dookies to clean up that have been sitting out in the snow. It's not good, you guys. It's not good. Um. All right. I'll see you on Sunday. Oh, um, you should have gotten, I was delayed. Sandy, sorry, I saw your comment in Discord. I was delayed getting last night's foundations recording. That's out. That email went out. I believe I sent it out. Did I send it out? Did you get it? Got it. Yes, it's out. So go check that out. Tomorrow, we have a break from each other. You don't have to listen to me prattle on about something market related. But we will meet on Sunday, 11 a.m., forecast the market, search consumer discretionary, figure out the things that we can figure out. Have a great weekend. It's good to see everybody. As always, happy trading.